is our next lesson on the reactions between metals and acids. So for your do now task, please can you consider these three following cups um, and consider the following questions. So which cup contains an acid, which is an alkali and which is a neutral liquid? And so if you can explain your reasons for your choices for each of those questions, um, I've given you some keywords in that um, pink purple box um, to support your answer for that. So pause the video whilst you have a go at those. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the reaction between metals and acids. So what I'd like you to do is make a prediction about what you think will happen when metals are placed in acid and explain why you might think that. So it's just a prediction, it doesn't have to be right or wrong, just thinking about what we already know about acids, what do you think is going to happen? To help you, there are some key words that you might want to consider. So pause the video whilst you make your prediction. Okay, so what we need to be able to do is to know how different metals react with acids. So considering do all metals react in the same way? So let's start off with sodium. So when sodium is placed into an acid, the metal will burst into a flame with a very strong reaction. Whereas when magnesium is placed in acid, it reacts quickly with the acid and produces lots of bubbles, but it doesn't have that flame that sodium had. When iron reacts, it's very slow and only produces a few bubbles. Lead, as well, very slow reaction, producing very few bubbles. Whereas when we put copper in acid, there aren't any bubbles. And actually, we can't see any observable reaction happening. So this indicates to us that not all metals are reacting in the same way in terms of how quickly they react and with the amount of energy that they release when they react. So sodium released a lot of energy and that's why we had that flame for the sodium reaction. So that leads us on to remind ourselves of the reactivity series which you should have looked at in your physical and chemical changes topic. So we've got our sodium, our magnesium, our zinc, our iron and our copper. And what we see here is that going down this list, our reactivity decreases. And thinking about what we saw in that experiment, for sodium we saw a flame, magnesium, lots of bubbles, zinc and iron we saw few bubbles. Where is copper? We saw no bubbles. And so using our observations from our reactions, that explains the reactivity series that we're looking at here. So the more vigorous, more bubbles that we were getting, that indicates to us the higher reactivity of the metal. Whereas where we didn't see any observable changes, that shows us it's a much lower reactivity. So on your worksheet, you've now got a question considering these four test tubes. So thinking about what we've just been discussing, can you please answer the questions that are on your worksheet? Pause the video whilst you have a go at that. Okay, so next is testing for hydrogen and gas. Now there's a link in the PowerPoint there you to actually watch the, that experiment happening. But what you'll notice is that when we test for hydrogen gas, we are using, and this is very blurry, but this is a burning splint. So wooden stick that's been set on fire. So what we've done here is we've reacted a metal with an acid. We've allowed those bubbles of gas to collect in the test tube. We've stopped it from escaping by putting our finger over the top. And then when we bring our lit splint to the top of the test tube, we end up hearing what we describe as a squeaky pop. And you'll be able to hear that if you watch that video. 
So considering the reaction that must then be happening. So what we have is we've got our um, acid given by our HX reacting with our metal in order to produce our salt and hydrogen. So it's those that hydrogen gas is the bubbles that we've been observing in those diagrams that we've looked at. Um, you'll notice that I'm using a large two in front of these species, and that's in order to conserve the numbers of each type of particles on the left and right hand side of the equation. So on the left I have two reds, on the right I have two reds, two greens on the left, two greens on the right, two blues on the left, and two blues on the right. So that's in order to make sure that we're conserving our numbers of our particles. So magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce the gas. What is the name of the gas and what test can we use to tell if it is a gas? And then the other product product in this reaction is a salt, so can you please complete the general word equation for the reaction of a metal with an acid? So there should be space on your worksheet to be answering those questions. So pause the video whilst you have a go at this. So I just want to recap from our previous lesson. So our chloric acid forms chloride salts, sulfuric acid sulfate salts and nitric acid nitrate salts. So this is already written on your worksheet so we don't need to write this out again but just make sure that we are comfortable using those endings for our salts. So if we return to this reaction then between magnesium and hydrochloric acid we need to be able to name this salt. So we need to look at what our metal is to get our start of the salt and we need to look at what type of our acid is to get our salt ending. So our salt has to have magnesium in as the metal part and then for our hydrochloric acid it's going to be a chloride. So magnesium chloride there is our salt. So what I'd like you to do is have a go at writing in blanks in these reactions. So some of them we need to be looking at the ending of the salt, some of them we need to look at both the ending and what gas is produced, and some of them we need to look at the ending as well as considering what metal we need to use, and some of these we need to use the ending to work out what acid we must have reacted with. And in this final question, we're writing the entire um, word equation just by knowing what our reactants are. If you're feeling confident, have a go at this extension. So how can you tell from these word equations that these are chemical reactions and not physical changes? So this is linking back to our previous topic of chemical and physical changes. There is a checklist as well on the worksheet just to make sure that you're happy with everything that we've covered. Um, but do email me and message me on Teams if you have any questions about this work. Um, Having completed this lesson, you should now be able to complete the remainder of the booklet that um, has been set on previous lessons and also for homework over this week. So I've set this as homework for over next week. Um, I just thought I'd give you that little bit extra time rather than leaving it till Monday to set. You've still got over a week um, to do it, but for those of you who want to make a head start on it, then it's on go for schools ready for you. Thank you all for watching and I hope you find it okay. Do let me know if there are any problems. Thank you.